Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com and wealthspin.blogspot.com. Let's talk economics. This is part of my series to talk about some concepts to hopefully continue the dialogue here online. If there are five houses on a block, let's say the world, in fact, consists of five houses. And let's say you have a thousand dollars worth of currency in the world, right? We'll make the numbers round. And let's say that the only thing you can spend that currency on is to buy a house. And let's say the houses are identical, right? Then we would know that each house is worth one fifth of the currency. That's the value of the house, right? It's one fifth of the currency. Now, if we have a central banker, right? And if let's say that banker's name is Ben, hypothetically speaking, of course, right? And if Ben doubles the money supply, right? Ben just starts printing money. If he doubles the money supply, guess what? I'll let you do the math. Did you know that the price of a house would still be one fifth of the currency? Right? Printing money doesn't change the real value of the house. While it might distort it to those who don't know that someone is off in the distance printing money while a novice or someone unaware of all of the information might think that the value of their house has increased from 200 to 400 right we know that in fact the value of the house the real value has stayed the same. It's still one fifth of the currency, right? Printing money simply distorts prices. It doesn't change the real value of goods and services, right? So as we hear all these fancy terms, all these multisyllabic words being thrown around by politicians who are both trying to lead and confuse us, right? Who want certain things to be hazy so that the opposition is dampened, right? As we hear words and phrases like monetizing the debt and quantitative easing, right? A lot of syllables. Just understand that no matter how much money they print, it's not changing the real value of the goods and services, right? The house remains worth one fifth of the currency, whether you make the currency X, two X, 20x or 100x, right? The real value has not changed. Let me just say too, that the entire concept of quantitative easing has been described, I believe accurately, as someone taking money, excuse me, taking water out of one end of the pool putting it in the other end of the pool and expecting the water level to change. Let me also point out too, with regard to Keynesianism, right? Let's understand that the concept is relatively new. Mankind has been on the planet for centuries, right? It's only in the last century 
that we've had the concept of Keynesianism enter the lexicon and be accepted as an economic truth or at least one economic theory. But now we've actually had generations to actually see how effective it is. How has Keynesianism worked out for Spain, Portugal, the United Kingdom, the United States? Do these countries have surpluses or do they all have debts? Right? Has Keynesianism resulted in unfunded liabilities that might actually pose a risk to domestic harmony and national security in these countries going forward? Sooner or later, we're going to reach a point where some of these doctrines over time are discredited, just like what we thought we knew in medicine in the 19th century has been, of course, discredited, as Nassim Taleb points out in his book, The Black Swan. And so just because they're teaching certain schools of thought, let's remember that in the big scheme of things, as we look back through the centuries, the millennia that are history, just remember that some of the things that were widely accepted as true in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, when some of us went to school, might be being proven false right before our very eyes, right? Because if Keynesianism is, in fact, something that works long term, then the countries that practice it shouldn't, as a rule, all have ongoing debts that literally are threatening their economic survival. How has all the stimulus spending helped Japan, for example, over the last 20 years? Would anyone here call their economy, even with the recent uptick, robust? Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at, if you're a sports fan, gamblersadvisory.com. If you're a financial fan, wealthspin.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.